Hello everyone, thanks for joining today's video. We're going to be looking into the iConnect Training BL01 Benchtop Simulator. We'll be doing a unit overview, the computer setup, and then some basic configuration. So this is a great little unit. It's about 10 to 15 pounds, it's lightweight, it's portable, you can throw it in a bag and you know train anywhere with it. It's great for building automation techs, HVAC control techs, programmers, really anyone who's working with BAS controllers. The input and output devices are pre-wired, so you're not messing with any wiring. Uh, later in some of the labs, you might get into some of the wiring or some of the testing, but yeah, I mean, it comes as a complete unit. This thing is ready to go out of the box. So level one curriculum that comes with this is great. It's using the BACnet protocol, it's web-based, it's highly interactive, it's using the Sedona programming, and that's awesome because that's an open source, free programming tool, and essentially it transfers over to some of the other programming uh, tools out there. So now looking at the actual unit, it's using the Contemporary Controls BAS Control 22 controller. Great little unit. Up top you have some of the universal and binary input controls. And then on the actual controller, you have the universal inputs. So there's eight inputs, again, pre-wired, so you're not messing with any of that. It's got some of the binary inputs up here. You got the 24 volt power. This is all pre-wired, like I said. You're plugging into the wall right here. Plug it in, you're good to go. It's got the testing ports for the 24 volts. So when you start getting a little deeper into the uh, training, you'll be ut utilizing those. You got the Ethernet, which you're plugging into your computer. So over here, you got the digital meter, 0 to 10 volt DC. And you got some of the indicator lights down here for the binary outputs. Before we get into the computer setup, I just want to express to you all, if you're serious about your building automation system or HVAC uh, training, check out the iConnect training website. They got a couple different benchtop simulators for building automation controls. This one might be considered the bare bones, the BL01. There's the next model up, the BL02, which adds some components. And then it goes all the way to the PT181, which is a full blown JS8000 VFD thermostat uh, Niagara workbench programming. They also have some other HVAC equipment training uh, bench tops, so definitely check it out. To do the computer setup, you can see the instructions here. It's recommended that you copy the two folders from the USB flash drive onto the desktop. So you should have two folders. This is going to be all your course information, and then you're going to have your install files. So we're going to double click on the tool set installer. You can read through the terms and the agreement. You're going to accept. Select where you'd like to install it. We're installing all four components for full installation. So at this time, we don't want to read the quick start guide, so we can unclick that, click finish. After the install is complete, you should have these four programs on your desktop, the BAS emulator, BAS backup, SAE, which is Sedona Application Engine, and then BDT, BACnet Discovery Tool. So if you haven't already removed your flash drive, you can definitely do it at this point. Uh, make sure to use the eject USB. and then. Off of your desktop, you can delete the folder Program Installers. Uh, we no longer need that. The programs are installed, we're good to go. Um, don't delete them off the USB flash drive in case you ever have to reinstall or re-image. The next step for lab one is to become a little more familiar with the controller. Contemporary Controls BAS Control 22 is a great unit. In the user manual, which they provide in, on the USB flash drive, if you purchase the simulator, or you can find it on the Contemporary Controls website. It has a lot of good information. In pages 1 through 24, it gets into a lot of the technical features, some of them we've already talked about. It, it dives a little bit deeper into the inputs and outputs, different ways that they can be configured, and other things. So for sake of time, I won't go through pages 1 through 24 with you, but if you were doing this training at home, this is where you would pause, read through that and kind of get a better understanding. In the user manual it gets into the inputs, how they can be configured. So this can be analog, temperature, contact closure, pulse input, or resistance. One cool feature with this controller, if you're
you're careful, you can pop off the uh, universal input terminal blocks and get a raw resistance measurement if you're using a digital voltmeter. So that's a cool little feature. Now we're going to connect the computer to the simulator. So everything's included in the simulator benchtop package. We have the power cord and the ethernet cord. So I'm going to get these set up. So we've hooked up power. We can see some of the light light up. We have the LED on the controller light up and then the digital voltmeter. We plug in the ethernet cord into the computer, but it's not going to automatically recognize it. We're going to have to go into the network properties and set it up. So I'll show you how to do that now on the computer. So these are the steps to configure the IP address. So the controller has a factory default with these settings. We need to go into our computer and configure to be able to hook up. Open Windows settings, network and internet, ethernet, change adapter options, open ethernet, we're going to go to properties, we're looking for TCP IP version 4, open properties, and now we need to use the IP address 192.168.92.69. The subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Close all this out. Now we're going to open our web browser. And we're, going to, we're going to put this IP address into the web browser. So you can see here we've entered the IP. It's asking us for a username and password. The default is admin and admin. And now we're in the controller. So this is through the web plugged into the controller, we have the ability to configure what we want here and now. Pretty cool, right? So now that we're in the controller, we want to become more familiar with the configuration, status, and dashboard pages that are on the bottom here that you can see. So if you read through pages 27 through 33 of the user manual of the controller, it'll dive a little bit deeper. For example, if I open the system config page, you may know what some of these are, but you may want to read through the user manual and get to know them a little bit deeper. Again, you're going to have explanations and definitions of all these different pages and dashboards. So once you've familiarized yourself with the different dashboards or pages from the main page, we're going to get into some of the actual configurations. For the device configuration, we want to make it unique to this simulator. So if you're following along at home, we're basically going to name the device object BL01 with the serial number of the unit. So now I'll go into system config. And like I said, we're going to do BL01 and then the serial number. For the device instance, we're going to do just the serial number. If you wanted to change the IP address of the controller, you could do that here. So with those settings programmed, we're going to click the submit button and then restart the controller from the main page. Submit, and then from the main page, we're going to restart the controller. So the system rebooted, we reconnected. Now if we go into our config file, we should see our new object name, our serial number, and if you had changed the IP address, it would be there. So now let's get into the input and output configuration. If you're following along, we're going to go back into the controller user manual, pages 34 through 40, and read about some of the configurations. Now let's go through some of those instructions. So on the main page here, we're going to click on Universal Input 1. So for universal input 1, we want to change the channel type to a thermistor 10K type 2. And we want to change the object name to zone temperature. We're going to submit and close that. 
and you can see it's changed to zone temperature. Now universal input 2, we're going to click on that. We're going to change this to a thermistor 10K type 3. We want to change the object name to supply air temperature. We're going to submit. It says working. And then we're going to close. So you can see it's changed. We have an out of bounds value, which we'll correct later. Universal input 3. We want to change the channel type to resistance. We want to change the name to local zone temp set point. Submit. We can see it's working. And we're going to close. So now we're going to get into the web component points. So from the main page, we're going to click the web components dashboard. Change WCO1 to this description. And WCO2 to WCO2 analog value. Again, you want to make sure you hit submit. And we can close that. The next step is to change some of the virtual points. So here you can see the instructions want us to change some of the names, types, and values of point 1 and 2. So from the main page, we're going to open virtual points. We're going to get into point 1. We're going to change the object name to occupy command. We're going to change the type to a binary value. And then we want to have the default as 1. We're going to submit and close. Virtual point 2. We want to change the object name to remote zone temp set point. It's going to be an analog value. And the default is going to be 70. Submit. Working. Close. So the last step we want to do is once we return to the main page, we want to turn this auto refresh to on. So now that we've turned auto refresh on, we can see some of these universal inputs have changed. The set points changed, the temperature has changed, the supply air temp is still showing up as an out of bounds value. If I rotate this dial, which is simulating the supply air temperature, you'll actually see it is starting to rise and lower. So now we've configured the controller with a few basic steps. Universal input one is a thermostat. And so it's reading 83 degrees. If I put my fingers over this, you should see it start to rise. So there you go, you can see it rising pretty quickly. Universal input two, this dial represents the supply air temperature. Now this is a very basic uh, benchtop simulator, so we don't have a supply air temperature, but this is simulating that. Universal input 3 is the local zone temperature set point. If I increase or decrease this, you can see that it rises and drops pretty dramatically. And then binary input 1. If I flip it up, it shows 1. If I flip it down, it shows 0. Same with binary input 2. And then let's play with 3. If I push it in, it shows 1. If I release, it shows 0. So hopefully this is starting to show you the communication between the board, the bench top, the controller, and the computer. So that concludes lab 1. We did a quick unit overview a quick overview of the controller, we set up the computer, we hooked up the computer to the controller, and then we did some configuration options. Lab 2 gets interesting because we use an emulator. So we're not actually hooking up to the controller, we're going to be running a virtual environment which replicates a BAS Control 22 controller. And this is great because we can do some programming, Without having a target controller, we can run backups, we can do clones, we can uh, do a lot of things that maybe we wouldn't want to do on a controller until we've tested it in a virtual environment. So I hope you join me for that one. Thanks for watching, everyone. 
Again, I wanted to point out iConnect training. They got a few different benchtop packages. This one, the BL01, is a great training resource. You just watch lab one. This level one curriculum has seven different labs. It gets into a lot of different features, a lot of different programming configuration options. What I wanted to stress is if you're serious about your training, if you're serious about building automation system or HVAC controls or programming or you're a technician, you really want the hands-on experience. You know, hopefully you're picking up some information from these videos, but until you get your hands on the controller and you're actually programming and doing some of the configuration and you're changing things and you're seeing it live time, uh, that's when it clicks for me. And so I, I can't stress that enough. You know, if, if your company can get one of these for you or your team, or even if you do this on your own, I mean, it, it's a game changer. At least it was for me. So that's one thing I wanted to recommend. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you check out the next few videos.